Warning, this video contains sensitive subject matter. Let's learn from history and how to fix it so we don't repeat it. On April 20th, 1999, Doom was blamed for this horrific event. School in a suburb of Denver, Colorado. Another school shooting in the United States. This one, the worst yet. It appears 25 people are dead, including two students suspected to have been the gunman. Witnesses say at least two young men, perhaps three, walked in the school armed with guns and explosives and opened fire. Police have identified the gunman as Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. The two young men were both found dead in the school's library with self-inflicted gunshot wounds. They apparently belong to a clique of outcasts in the high school called the Trenchcoat Mafia. Doom was the perfect thing to blame for a twisted teenage boy, but was it really the game's fault? How'd the community defend itself? And what can we do to prevent this from ever happening again? Players young and old could argue that it's not the game that took them from these smiling young men to their demented, possessed counterparts. Dylan happily attended Columbine Prom three days before he unleashed chaos, and Eric was always a little demented. His twisted mind and Doom went a little too deep. Eric was a huge fan of the Doom series. He owned some of the novels and designed fan-made levels under the name Reb Doomer. He recorded a videotape just before the massacre, and he was excited for the planned shooting, saying that it would be like Doom. He also pointed out that the shotgun was, quote, straight out of Doom. Eric also said, quote, it'll be like the LA riots, the Oklahoma bombing, World War II, Vietnam, Duke Nukem, and Doom all mixed together. I want to leave a lasting impression on the world, end quote. Chilling still yet is the statement by David Proctor, a then Columbine High School student who gave a statement to government investigators of the Columbine massacre. David played with Harris and Klebold via modem, and Harris told David in 1999 that he created a level that was Columbine High School. Proctor added that another classmate had told him the same. Now, Harris did release several wads, however, there is no record of the Columbine High School level being found on the internet. After this massacre, Doom websites refused to hold Eric Harris levels on them, seeing the community should separate itself from this instance. Doom World even posted an editorial defending the game and the staffers of the site, and took various interviews on SFGate.com and CNN to show that this game was not to blame for Harris's actions. There's a PDF that contains some of Harris's documents and personal writings. They include some of the designs for his levels, and even on page 272 says, Doom is so burned into my head, my thoughts usually have something to do with the game. Later on page 321, Eric references the Doom novels. The description of Harris's UAC Labs wad says, Good luck, Marine, and don't forget, kill them all. While the copyright section threatens, you may not change a thing with this wad. If you do, I will blow you up and it will be cool. The effects carried further in April 2001 when the family of Dave Sanders, who was the only teacher killed in the shooting, filed a lawsuit in the court against its software and 25 other game film companies. He says that the violent content in the media was directly responsible for this attack and sought $5 billion in damages. Its software had recently been sucked into another lawsuit with Heath High School in 1997, but that too, along with Columbines, were dismissed. This was a different time. The personal computer was booming in the 90s. But if we take a step back, starting in 1985, the PMRC, or Parents Music Resource Center, pushed back against rock music for allegedly inciting violent acts within its listeners. If it was rock music in the 80s, was it video games turn to be in the hot seat in the 90s? Was this on the mind of parents and lawmakers everywhere? It's worth noting that something had to take the fall, and video games were that perfect scapegoat. There is controversy surrounding Dave Cullen, who wrote a book about Columbine in 2009. He says that Harris was, quote, the callously brutal mastermind, while Klebold was a quivering depressive who journaled obsessively about love and attended the Columbine prom three days before opening fire. This appears to be a bit of a misconception, as Klebold was the more aggressive of the two. However, we see that Harris had set up his own doom. But we need to take a look and step back from a gamer and parent perspective. All hope seems lost when an event that is supposed to be a propane tank bombing fails turns into a shooter of one of the worst in United States history. How can we learn from this to make sure that this never happens again?
Now, I think it's important to say that although it's been 23 plus years since the event, and I've been a gamer myself for 30, and I'm also a dad, the games may change, but who we are at our core, with our emotions and feelings as a human, those remain the same. Now, even though these past few years have been hard on all of us, I still think that there are things that we can pull from the Columbine Massacre and learn to help this never happen again, or at least mitigate it to the best that we can. Now, gaming is therapy for a lot of people. Yes, even shooters. It lets us get that pent up aggression out there. Those exciting clinching moments of am I gonna win or am I gonna lose and have fun and connect with friends without being violent. Now, I will say that if someone does struggle with mental health, which I will talk about in a second, they should maybe take a step back from these types of games if they find that it is detrimental to how they perceive life and their actions. But for those that are able to handle these games appropriately, let's talk about that. Something I think that we can look forward to is bullying. It is no secret that Harris and Klebold were bullied in their school called names and generally not treated well in that regard. Now, am I saying that what they did was okay because they were bullied and they were retaliating? Absolutely not. Nothing will ever make what they did okay. Nothing will change those lives lost from the students, the teacher, the damage to the community, and the parents knowing that their sons were school shooters. There is nothing that will take that back and change it. But I think that we can all agree that less or no bullying in schools would lead to better outcomes, not just for now, but in the future. Think about where that would be if that could be cut down. Now we also have to look at mental health. As I mentioned, it has been 23 years since the Columbine shooting happened and Doom caught this blame, but mental health has changed over those years. We've learned a lot more now. We have more resources, facilities, teachers, officials that can handle this type of thing. And if these resources are available to the students for them to be able to take without judgment, without cost, subsidized in some way, that could lead to help. However, I am fully aware and I understand that not every student will take this opportunity if they are given it. Harrison Klebold may have very well laughed at it and shut it down. We don't know because this is, was not an option at that time. But I think that if we could look at what happened in the past and apply it to the future, that would help so much. And when we really look back at this whole Columbine Doom event, was it really Doom's fault that all of this happened? Or was it the twisted mind who took the thing that he loved and enjoyed and pulled himself deeper into an abyss, into a pit of hatred? enacting these hateful acts of violence. Since you made it this far, check out my Dark Side of Doom's 30 year history, where I go more into detail about the things that have plagued this game over the past 30 years. Comment below what you think. I'm Austin. Thank you for watching.